Airbus says it needs to increase production of its narrow-body jets by 50% just to keep up with rising demands. Q1 revenue is up 82% over the previous year. Not exactly analogous because of what happened, but the company's uh, guidance for this year remains unchanged, despite disruptions from the war in Ukraine. The titanium supply, which comes from Russia, is obviously a major factor. Airbus chief executive, Guillaume Fari, is with me from Amsterdam. It's good to see you, as always, sir. Um, the, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the, the difficulties remain. There is this war, and you're being hit by sanctions in Russia that you can't trade there. But elsewhere, doing very nicely. Yes, indeed. Um... It's a very contrasted situation between uh, different regions of the world. But overall, we see a recovery in the uh, traffic and we see a very strong demand for our planes moving forward. So we are in the situation to decide to increase the production rates uh, in the perspective of uh, 2025 and beyond. The question of Russia. Now, you, you had some notes uh, notes the consolidated reports in which you go through the sanctions and the effects. But obviously, it really is because you can't service in any shape or form those Airbus metal in Russia at the moment, can you? Yeah, that's true. That the sanctions are preventing delivering uh, goods to Russia and servicing uh, aircraft and other products over there. What's going to happen? Because a lot of those leased planes are still there. There's a question of whether they're going to be insured, paid or whatever. But at some point, that's going to have to be sorted out. Uh, have you started to work on a post plan? As far as Airbus is concerned, uh, we can no longer deliver uh, planes to Russia or deliver parts or service, as I said earlier. Uh, but the situation of the planes which have been already delivered uh, that are belonging to the airlines or belonging to the lessors is something that they, the operators or the lessors have to manage. Uh, we are trying to manage our own part of the, of the complex situation we're in. The A321 XLR, which you've announced you're, you're delaying slightly, but it's a, it's a small delay because of a need to convince regulators of what? It's a delay that is linked to the uh, progress we are making uh, on the development, on the uh, ground test. Uh, we will soon have a, the first prototype in flight for the flight test and the certification process. And all of this is taking a bit more time than what we had planned in this rather complex environment after years of COVID um, in, the, uh, in, a, in a moment where there is a, maybe a bit more pressure on the regulatory bodies as well. So this is taking a bit more time and we are just acknowledging that this is the case and uh, delaying the entry into service from end 2023 to the beginning of 2024. The, the aviation industry, myself included to an extent, is agog with your battle with Qatar Airways. Now, you won the, the, you run the, you won the question over the A320 in the London court, but it doesn't really address this problem of the 350. Do you see a way of resolving this dispute with Qatar over the 350 and the skin of the 350 without a full-scale trial? We don't like to be um, in the situation we're in with, uh, with Qatar Airways. It's a very important customer of Airbus. So we will keep trying to find an amicable resolution uh, to the situation on the, on the 350. And there is a, indeed a, a legal case ongoing, but we are trying our very best to come to a solution moving forward. I mean, just one more on this. The, both sides seem to be digging in for a long battle here, which can't serve anybody's interests particularly well, can it? We were not the ones to decide to, to go into um, a legal action, so we have to defend ourselves. But as I said earlier, I would really like to find a way forward that is of a different nature through an, an amicable resolution with Qatar Airways, and we will keep trying to uh, reach that objective of an amicable settlement. Let's talk about the 350,000 Project Sunrise. Well, 
the pl you flew a plane, you flew a plane to uh, to, to, to Sydney, um, and it was there for the announcement. Now you've got to do quite a bit more work on it, not the certification, but fuel tanks and the like. You're confident you'll make the 2025 deadline. I know that seems a long way off, but in the world of aviation, it's not. That's a fantastic contract, and we are very happy to have been selected by Qantas for the uh, mission Sunrise and connecting uh, Sydney to um, Western Europe or to, um, to the US. Um, yes, there are developments to be made on the, on the product to extend the range. Uh, actually, we have started to work on that project a long time ago, before COVID-19. Therefore, we have de-risked the project, and we think uh, 2025 is a good uh, time frame to come with the entry into service of this uh, great plane that will extend mm -hmm. the range beyond what is existing today. 20 odd hours, good Lord. Uh, Guillaume, as you look forward now in your tenure as CEO, what's your priority? Because you've got the 350 and it's up and running and it's nice and you've got Sunrise. You've got the 321 in the fullness of time. The XLR is very popular, the LR is very popular and you've got the Neos. So where do you now focus your CEO attention? Indeed, we have a great range of products with the A220, the A320 family, the very successful family of the A320, including the A321 and the XLR, the 330neo and the 350. So we are very happy with uh, the range of products. One of the priorities is to serve our customers, um, in particular on the A320 family that is very much on demand. Uh, that's why we have decided to increase the production rates to be able to serve that demand. Uh, but beyond the, the production and uh, progress on those products, you know that we have a purpose that is to pioneer sustainable aerospace for a safe and united world. And um, in those words, you have sustainable. So we've put the uh, ambition to decarbonize aviation very high on our agenda. And in parallel of all the actions we have on the existing range of products, the improvement, uh, the safety, mm -hmm. the ramp up and all those trends. We also are preparing technologies to be able to bring the next generation of products to the market, including, but not limited to, uh, the first hydrogen 